Hey guys, so you've probably seen by now the video of Tex Grebner having his accidental discharge where he hits himself in the thigh with a Kimber Pro Carry 2 45 caliber pistol. He was using a Serpa holster. And I want to talk a little bit about the Serpa holster today and I want to explain some problems that I see with the, the basic design of the Serpa and then compare it to the Safari Land 6000 series which has a thumb release. Now the Serpa has a couple of issues with its basic design that I want to address. Now the discussions on the internet are blame the shooter, don't blame the hardware. I blame both. The Serpa has some design characteristics that make it inherently more dangerous and a lot less forgiving of mishandling than any other holster on the market. The Serpa is known for its lock which is released by your index finger. Now this particular Serpa holster is configured as a paddle and it's meant to be worn high on the belt and this is similar to what Tex was wearing and it's raked forward. You'll see down here I have a Serpa and this is a holster that I actually carry pretty much every day. You always see it on me out here at the range and this is a thigh holster exact same locking mechanism but it's designed to be worn lower on the leg and perfectly vertical. Now let's talk about some of the characteristics of the Serpa. The Serpa is a retention holster. That means that the pistol is supposed to be locked in the holster until you hit the release button which thereby releases it. Now it pinches the front trigger guard and that's how it locks itself in the holster. Now where Tex ran into problems it's twofold. First of all Tex had knocked his safety off and as we all know the 1911 safety is right here. Tex was wearing the pistol like this. He had, went, he had gone for the pistol, knocked the safety off, started to pull up on the Serpa and if you do that with a Serpa holster you pull up even just a little bit you cannot release the lock now. It binds, the, it binds that holster and the pistol together. If you pull, hit the button, I'm pulling on the holster, hit that button, I don't care how hard you push, you can see my fingers turning red, it will not release the pistol. You have to push forward and hit the button again and the pistol will come out. Tex grabbed the pistol, knocked the safety off, pulled up, hit the button, nothing happened and the Serpa from that point forward, and this is where training kicks in, people will tend to curl their finger to get more leverage and push down on that lock to release the pistol and then draw the pistol and look what happened. My pistol, my trigger finger just dropped straight to the trigger of the handgun. Watch that again. Doesn't release, I'm sorry. Pull up, hit the button, doesn't release. Turn your finger in, it causes it to release because you get enough leverage. You pull the pistol up and the finger drops straight to the trigger. That's exactly what happened to Tex. With the safety off, three, three or four pound trigger, excitement, jerking, trigger dropping to the, uh, the trigger finger dropping to the trigger, was the perfect situation for a discharge that luckily didn't cripple Tex. Now there's other things about the way Tex was carrying the Serpa that in my opinion make the situation even worse. If the Serpa is straight up and down, now you'll notice the Serpa doesn't fit very many people, very universally. I have big hands and long fingers. When I hold my pistol like this, you'll notice that the locking mechanism falls between these two knuckles. That doesn't make it very easy for me to keep my finger extended when I draw the pistol. It makes it a little bit more difficult. People with long fingers like myself would be more inclined to do this, and that's where you fall into problems because when you do that, your trigger finger falls right onto the trigger of the pistol. So you have to resist that temptation with the Serpa. You want to hit it with the pad of your finger, draw, and you cannot pull up and hit the button. You'll never get it to release. You have to hit the button, then pull up, and that just takes practice. The thing that also makes this worse is when you put the holster at a rake and put it behind you, this is my natural position of my hand. When I grab my pistol, notice how my elbow wants to come forward, but look where my finger naturally falls. It falls above the lock release on the Serpa because of the forward cant and being behind my hip. That causes me to bring my, my hand even, my elbow even more forward into an awkward position to, to begin my draw. I'm already setting myself up for failure. Now if I, it also makes it more difficult for me to get my finger to the lock, which makes me more inclined to do this, which is exactly, again, what happened to Tex. You'll notice with the Serpa that's on my thigh, it's a lot more natural position. I can grab the pistol, I can hit it, and it comes out naturally. I've never had a problem with the Serpa. Ridden, or riding down low like this. You'll never see me carry, even though I own them, 
Serpas on the belt at a canted forward position because they simply don't work for me and they didn't work for techs and they don't work for a lot of people. As a matter of fact, these handgun holsters are actually banned on many of the most notable firearms training facilities ranges. Ranges like Gunsight, Larry Vickers bans them from practice or from training. Suez International, uh, Tactical Response. All of those big name training organizations ban the Serpa because it has problems. Another problem with the SERPA is the fact that if you roll around on the ground, you're doing scuffling around or you're doing you know, hands-on training, this easily becomes bound up with debris, as I show in one of my previous videos with snow, how you can lock the holster, or the pistol, I'm sorry, in the holster, and you can't get your handgun out. Some people actually report actually having to cut the holster apart to get their handgun out after they fouled it with debris because there's no easy way to take this holster apart with a gun in it. So if you take a look at competing designs, like the Safari Land, the difference is this pistol, to release it from the holster in the Serpa, I'm having to apply downward pressure with my trigger finger. When you're excited, the last thing you want your trigger finger doing is anything but staying along the side of the receiver. Using it to release a lock mechanism just complicates things, especially when you're in an excited state that causes problems that leads to accidental discharges like Tex had. Holsters, retention holsters such as this, Safari Land, has a thumb release. The finger falls naturally along the side, you hit the thumb release, it pops out, and you don't have to worry about you pushing down with your finger, and that's where they get in trouble with the Serpa, pushing down and falling onto the trigger of the gun. This, even when you're excited, the worst that's gonna happen because it's part of the retention system. Now, when I'm talking about the Serpa not releasing when you pull up on the gun, it's more than likely by design. This Safari, Safari Land is the exact same thing. I can't release the gun if I pull up on it. I have to push down, release it, and then pull out. That's just part of the retention but you're not required to do anything with your index finger other than keep it straight. It's, it's a lot more safe in my opinion, and a lot of trainers would agree with me in that opinion. If you have any questions about the Serpa, what I've explained here, any comments, feel free to post those comments to our YouTube channel, or also you can visit us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash military arms. As always, everybody, we really appreciate you guys watching us, and thanks for stopping by.